there, artists. I haven't posted a video for a long time as we're back to in-person learning, but I've been taking art classes myself. I'm pursuing my master's degree through the Art of Education University. And right now I'm taking an amazing fiber arts course. This week's assignment was to experiment with surface design techniques like tie-dye, and I've learned a lot about it. Shibori is an ancient dye and resist technique that has been developed in Japan over centuries. It means to wring, squeeze, or press. Shibori was around long before anything I ever knew as tie-dye. I'll share some of my resources and inspirations in the description of this video. For me, I hadn't tie-dyed since I was a child, so this was very experimental. I made a lot of mistakes, but I learned a lot. I was very lucky an art teacher friend of mine had tie-dyeing materials I could borrow and I already had the cotton and muslin at home. I knew it would be really important to have a workspace that was covered so dye didn't get on anything. I used water and a cup of soda ash to soak my fabrics and make sure they were clean and ready to absorb the dye. While this fabric was soaking, I decided to experiment with some dry fabrics. I decided to experiment with a shibori technique I watched a video about where you wrap fabric around a glass bottle or something else that's round. I didn't really have a glass bottle or anything so I decided to use a toilet paper roll since the fabric was dry. I wrapped the string around as evenly as I could and tied a knot when I was done. The next technique I decided to try on my next piece of fabric was an accordion fold folding it back and forth evenly. Unlike the round piece, I decided to use several pieces of cut string to tie it up. Now it was time to try the tie dyeing process on these dry fabrics. I decided to use the store-bought ones since the fabrics were dry. They didn't absorb that well at first, but after wrapping them in the plastic, they started to seem to soak up the dye. Now it was time to try some other new folding techniques with a clean, wet fabric. I did try the accordion technique again on this first one, but I folded it in in half first. Then I realized I wanted to try to add more folds to see what that would do. Then I added strings in all different directions and tied them tightly. I wanted to see how using the bottles from the store-bought tie-dye would compare to the dipping process, so I experimented a little bit with that. I scrunched the next piece up tightly and then wrapped tons of string around it. I was inspired by a shibori technique I researched in which you wrap the fabric tightly around a block and then tie it with strings. I thought the top of the bucket I was using would be great to try it with, I would later realize it probably wasn't the best choice because it had an indent in it, so the string was never able to wrap as tightly as it could have been. But again, this is an experiment. I did my best to wrap the strings as evenly and tightly as possible. I loved the pattern it made and it reminded me of a stringed instrument. Next, I tried a classic tie-dye wrapping technique. I was pretty excited when it was finally time to mix the dye. I added the soda ash, the salt, and of course the fiber reactive dye into a big bucket of water and stirred it around. I decided to start with the rolled fabric. It was dry fabric and earlier I had tried it with the bottles, but it wasn't absorbing, so I tried dipping it. It seemed to work a lot better. Then I tried my next piece. I dipped it a few times. As I squeezed out the fabric, Shibori's meaning started to make much more sense. The last piece was the one I was most excited about, and since I only had one bucket for mixing dye, I decided to add some other colors with the squirt bottles first, and then just dip half of my piece. I decided that I would unwrap some of them in an hour or so and leave the rest overnight. Now it was time to unveil half of my tie-dye pieces. The one with the purple at first I didn't think was going to turn out good, but as I unrolled it I was pleasantly surprised. It made a really cool pattern 
and the texture of the fabric added to the design. I was really impressed with that. The next one was interesting too. This was the one I swirled around and did kind of the classic tie-dye pattern. There were those two yellow blocks that were still on it and you could still see them, but I thought it looked pretty cool. When I saw the outside wrapping of this next piece, I was really excited because I could see lines in the fabric right away. Unfortunately, as I unrolled it, I was surprised to find out it didn't turn out the way I thought. There was the toilet paper roll that I threw out because it was soaking wet. And I think that kind of absorbed some of the dye and the fact that I rolled it around so much, it didn't allow the dye to get on all of the fabric, but it made a pretty cool design. Now that it was unwrapped, the next step was to rinse it again. I had soaked the rest of the tie-dyes in bags overnight, so it was really exciting to wake up this morning, untie all the string, take off all the elastics, and see how the creations unfolded. The last step was to rinse the fabric one more time and then wash it in the washing machine with the Synthrapol. I did that and then I washed it again with hot water. I noticed when I took my fabric out of the washing machine that the edges were all frayed, so I was hesitant to put them in the dryer. Instead, I hung them out. The strings are really great, too. I can use them for another project. I absolutely love the final product of this project. I learned a lot through the process and made some mistakes along the way, but that's just going to help me next time. Next time I'll make sure that all the fabric is washed and prepared and I'll use more firm pull or block when wrapping the fabric around an object. I'll make sure that the strings are tied really tight so that the resist process will work. And now that I have a lot of these steps down and I understand the process better, I can get more creative next time. That's the great thing about being an artist. Once you learn a process, you can then really make it your own. In the future, I plan to experiment with more colors and also adding more dye to the mix for more bold color in my work. Great to share with you again, artists. Hope to see you again soon.